Hello, my soccer universe. So the last uh, match review of the year. Um, I am doing this now Sunday morning, so you will get most of rounds 19 and 20 of the Premier League review. I leave the Sunday games for tomorrow and I'll take it on at the end of the video. It is crazy. I mean, if you saw the little What to Watch video, which came a little bit late, I'm sorry. You know, Christmas is a time where a there's a lot to do and B, I'm taking it very, very easy uh, as well. So yeah, but I have been busy. I've been preparing top 10 videos that I still have to cut and so on or shoot. But yeah, so there are many things and I am the day by day stuff is not going um, as smoothly as it should be. What am I wearing? I probably should have worn Liverpool, but I said I have been wearing Liverpool so often. Let's wear a smaller English team. And yeah, Crystal Palace did quite well and it will also remind me of one special thing. Let's dig right in with Boxing Day action where, yeah, Boxing Day, I was really watching a lot of soccer. I did not watch the early game between Spurs and Brighton. Uh, I saw that uh, Brighton had a 1-0 lead at the half, but Spurs turned, turned around. A goal by Kane had been ruled out where, yeah, judgment call. Bournemouth Arsenal, Arteta's first game in charge. Um, saw a very timid Arsenal, I have to say. Uh, Bournemouth took a lead, and this was all in this afternoon slot where there were many games, and I watched it switching around. Uh, but from what I could tell, Arsenal was kind of timid. Yes, they were a little bit better organized. Yes, they played. Da, 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 da. However, Bournemouth took 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 a lead, and it was kind of a lucky goal where the ball just falls in the way to Obama Young that he can slow, slow it home for a 1-1. Um, there were chances for for a winner, but uh, ineptitude in front of goal. Oh. Southampton in a real stunner, completely outplayed Chelsea. If you look at both goals, uh, the first one uh, was a counter-attack. Not really, actually. I, I don't really see one on a counter-attack. They win the ball uh, at the center line and then run down and get the goal. Um, a very nice movement in, in, in between and they caught Chelsea going forward. So in that sense, a counter counter -like. A second goal was a really, really, really nice finish and Southampton gets a vital win at Stamford Bridge and Chelsea cannot profit from their huge win over Spurs. Crystal Palace West Ham for the fifth or sixth time in, in the row. The team that takes the lead does not go home as the winner or actually ends up losing the game. Crystal Palace was the better team throughout, uh, but West Ham, who were playing in their white jerseys, I have to say the West Ham white jersey is also quite nice, um, take the lead 1-0, but uh, Crystal Palace very quickly gets an equalizer and then Jordan Ayew with a wonderful goal. I think this was the goal of the round at least, uh, or the goal, the best goal that I saw makes it 2-1 for Crystal Palace, hence I chose this jersey. Uh, really, really good win for them. Uh, they move up really high now. Um, Everton gets a 1-0 win over Bur Burnley in Angelotti's first uh, game in charge. Um, there was not much coming from Burnley, so I think it was a wholly deserved win. Sheffield United, Watford. Uh, De Lufeo gives uh, Watford a 1-0 lead. Uh, on a count, counter attack and a very unnecessary penalty uh, about 10 minutes later or so. Hence, Sheffield United a penalty, uh, which is 1 1. Then chances on both sides, but it ends 1 1. And Aston Villa gets a 1 0 over Norwich. So, um, yeah, also was, a, I think, a late uh, winner. Uh, Norwich had a lot of chances, in, uh, but couldn't convert. As the Villa goes forward and gets the win, which is an important one. I was really looking forward to United against Newcastle. However, um, after Newcastle got the 1 0 lead, they shot themselves in the foot with poor defending, and United, before the half, could make it 3 1. I mean, the worst goal, I think, was the, sex, the second one, where I think it was Cher played a pass. I don't know if it was intended for a goalkeeper now, defender, who just could easily be intercepted, could then even got a deflection and it was 2-1 for United. Um, Van Van Bissaka, um, was it 2? I don't know, I think Rashford uh, to make it 3-1 and then um, uh, Martial make, made it 4-1, he also made the first United goal. So, um, in a way, this was more about Newcastle's weakness than Manchester United's strengths, but it's a convincing 4-1 win, it has to be said. And the big one, and I did not like that it was played late, but I still watched it, 
Leicester City, Liverpool. And if you ever were in doubt that Liverpool is the best team in England at the moment, that match showed it. Uh, utter domination of Leicester City. And in the first half, I really have to say, it was only down to um, failing to convert the chances that Liverpool were only 1-0 up. Um, Mane missed a big one. Salah had a few chances. Uh, it was in the end uh, from, uh, from a cross from Alexander-Arnold, who again uh, was outstanding, that uh, Firmino had one in. In the second half, you thought that Leicester might have a chance to get back into the game uh, for about 10, 15, 15 minutes, but then a penalty. Yes, it is a handball that went that way. And yes, it's still very nitpicky, blah, blah, blah. I, I'm not very much in favor of this ruling, but under the rules, it is a penalty. Um, Liverpool is a warrior penalty. Milner just came on, makes it 2-0. Then I think Firmino makes it 3-0 with another header. And then Alexander-Arnold uh, makes it 4. And this was within a span of 8 minutes. Total destruction of Leicester City. Liverpool soaring high. Putting uh, even more distance between themselves and Leicester City. 13 points with a game in hand. Uh, that more or less meant means that, yeah, it's all but decided that Liverpool will get this uh, title. Uh, I computed roughly, it's a five-game lead, so Liverpool could afford to lose uh, lose five games and they still would be in first place. Uh, the question was, will Manchester City take care um, of Wolves and s move back into the second spot? And at the very beginning, this was Wolves against City was one of the craziest games I've seen this year. Um, and the pendulum swung back and forth. Uh, first of all, really bad positioning in defense forces, um, uh, what's his name, Ederson to come out and kind of tackle the striker. I mean, he tried to not hit him, but he hit, he, he hit him. It's a, unfortunately a clear red, red card, but he cannot do much uh, if, if he wants to avoid the red card. He has to risk that a goal uh, is given up. So uh, it was, I think, after 13 minutes or so, Manchester City was already a man down. So a not good start for them. Um, however, then the pendulum swung back 10, 10 minutes later. Penalty is awarded. Um, first, the referee did not give it. And I have to say, it was pretty clear penalty. Uh, so that the referee waved on, yeah. VAR steps in. Um, Raheem Sterling steps up and it's saved by Rui Patricio. However, it has to be retaken. There was encroachment by a, by, by, by a player. Again, VAR decided on that. Have to uh, Manchester City steps up again. Again, uh, there is actually encroachment or maybe just by a hair knot. However, this time Rui Patricio saves it again from Raheem Sterling. Pep Guardiola was kind of gest uh, gest gesticulating. Change, change, change. No. Same spot, same penalty, but this time the bounce back is much better and Raheem Sterling can make it 1-0. Uh, and then, actually, you have to say, uh, even though Aguero came, came, came off, they could keep the shape uh, over, over and had actually quite good control of the game, I thought. Wolves had a little bit more trouble getting into the game. In the second half, Wolves comes out a little bit more, but uh, swiftly caught on counter that uh, De Bruyne to uh, Raheem Sterling makes it 2-0, and you're thinking, wow, City is really resilient, get, uh, getting this win. But very shortly thereafter, they give up a goal. Uh, I think it was Adama. And then um, Mondi, in, I think around the 80th, is playing around the penalty box with, with, with the ball, should punt it away. I mean, Wolves at this moment is trying to get the equalizer. Is really pu pushing hard. Uh, he cannot punt it away. Adama take, takes the ball for a ball for him, uh, cross in, and it is 2-2. Two, two. And then five many minutes later, I think Doherty makes it 3-2 for Wolves. Uh, maybe overall deserved victory in an absolute crazy game. Uh, I loved every minute of it and it kicked off a series of great games that I've been watching. This loss more or less knocked City out of the title race, if there ever was one. 
But then in England, it's as man as continuous on Saturday with also a big slate of games where Brighton in, the, in an early game beats Bournemouth 2-0. I didn't see that. I saw Newcastle Everton, which was highly entertaining because in the first, I would say, 25 minutes, Everton really uh, throttled Newcastle. Uh, it was Newcastle couldn't come out and Everton had many chances. Uh, and I thought that Mo Moise Kane was a linchpin in, in, in attack. However, uh, they could have profited a lot more if Theo Walcott had a little bit more composure. Uh, at least two attacks I put on him that uh, could have been played much, much, much better. But uh, they get, uh, the, I think, Le Calvin Le Levert, Levin Levert, Lewin, Calvin Lewin, I think, made the 1-0 for Everton. Uh, Newcastle had then in the 30th a goal ruled out, rightly so, for offside after a really wonderful move. Um, On the side, uh, Almiron takes a shot, hits the post, and then unfortunately, uh, Carroll is offside. Uh, Newcastle get their equalizer through share, was actually quite nicely taken. Um, one time did int internet to make it 1-1, but Everton in the end gets the win 2-1 and actually hung on and Ancelotti has two out of two. So then Crystal Palace didn't see highlights and it 1-1. I think there was some avar contro controversy. Watford with a 3-0 win over Aston Villa. So Aston Villa beat Norwich, but Watford now beat Aston Villa. So uh, relegation battle is huge. Leicester City makes nine changes and still manages to win over West Ham 2-1. Um, I don't want to say they stay in the title race at all, but um, at least they hang on for now to their second spot and West Ham had to fire coach Pellegrini after that. And then a game that I also enjoyed, but a little bit for the wrong reasons, uh, Norwich against Spurs. Uh, first of all, I enjoyed it. The jersey match was glorious. Uh, the yellow and green against the dark blue of Spurs. This is one that you don't see very often and it looked gorgeous. Uh, yes, the Norwich City jerseys are maybe a little bit over-designed, but It was a pretty interesting game. In the first half, I early on, I think there were two times where Kane runs. I don't want to say clear and goal, but it was it's it's something where you would expect uh, that he would make a goal out of. And once he pulled it off to Dele Ali, um, who yeah mishit the shot. Uh, but Norwich was. Uh, Honestly, better in the game and got a very well deserved lead um, through. Through um, was a Croatian dude, I don't remember the name now, but he catches the ball in midfield. Uh, it was similar to the Southampton against Chelsea, Ch 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 then runs down, down the center, makes a shot that is not even going to go into the corner. I thought uh, Gazaniga did not look good there. Then they get the second goal through Puki, and it is ruled out by offside call that. I don't know. Yes, by the rule, if any goal scoring part of your body is ahead, blah, 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 blah. This was just by millimeters. I mean, the lines are touching. And what I have a problem with is that, um, and I'm um, technically the frame rate, you cannot actually determine the exact point where the ball is hit. There is a little wiggle room and you actually should use this wiggle room also when taking the line. The line shouldn't be thin. There should be a certain margin there. And I think within a mar margin of error, you have to put the lines ov over each other. And if they are then touching, this shouldn't be an offside. And I think this is something that happened here. Because if you look at it, the if you eyeball it, the center of gravity of the player, or the most player, is clearly not. I mean, the feet are clearly behind. Uh, it's not, uh, I know there are people say, yeah, we have the technology, the rule is the rule, but I say we have a margin of error in there. There is a little wiggle room. I think this, in this case, it's the slimmest of margins and this should not be ruled offside. I'm sorry. I'm, and then I don't know how, if they have any 3D technology to really determine exactly this point, because that also seems a little bit arbitrary to me. Anyway, I think Norwich for the first time is, I felt they were robbed of the 2-0. Two, two um, but I think the referee made two more egregious mistakes against them. The first one is, uh, early in the second half, I mean Spurs came out a much better with him. I think if Norwich would have been up by 2-0, it would have been well, well deserved. But Spurs come out, um, take control of the game. 
And then Kane kind of fouls a uh, Norwich player, pushes him in, in, in the back, he falls and the ball hits him. The referee is letting play on and suddenly the Spurs are hand, 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 hand. And then the referee whistles and gives the free kick to uh, Spurs in a very good position. I thought this was absolutely weak and ridiculous refereeing right there. And then uh, in, in, in addition, we, yeah, the free kick is very nicely taken by Eriksen. It takes a small deflection. But I think even without deflection, he, he would have made it in. Then, a little bit of justice, a complete defensive blunder by Norwich, uh, no, by Spurs, hands Norwich the 2-1. I mean, Puki is there, but it's Alderweireld who passes the ball back and it hits Aurier and in, in, into an own goal. Puki didn't even touch it. 2-1, and I was super happy. And at that point, Norwich really seemed to be then uh, taking this result home until the referee decides to a challenge where I honestly have to say, Kane just uses the body to fall over. I wanna, I'm wanna. i calling it like, like a, there was no foul. He's sliding past. Yes, it was a mistimed tackle, but he is not running into the uh, player. Kane makes the turn, sees the body, and expertly falls over and makes it 2-2. Then a third goal for Spurs is for once rightly ruled, ruled out. I honestly have to say the referee... I, I, I have a hard time usually doing, but I hear I felt that the referee robbed Norwich of a result. And then in the late game, United gets a 2-0 win at Burnley, which puts them also in a pretty good position, uh, more, more, more importantly, ahead of Spurs for the moment. So okay, thankfully the game's ended early today, so I can do this in the evening. Um, it leaves me some more time to get everything done uh, tomorrow morning to get this out on time. Uh, well, before I get to the three games today, first of all, yes, now I decided to put it with Liverpool, but not a red one. I put the one with, with a twist in the last review of the year to finish with the, what I think best team of the year, uh, if I see the entirety of it. Um, also, Everton, both girls were scored by Kelvin. Um, Leon. Uh, it's, it's a name that is very, really hard <laughs> to pronounce. I don't know. Calvin Lewin, I will get there. And I also want to say that I think that the goal by, second goal by Brighton is one worth watching. And yeah, bar, I saw now again the decisions they won for the first time, the one at the um, uh, Southampton game where uh, Palace goal was ruled out. That's ridiculous, but I still think the Norwich one was even more ridiculous. And we have one more of these uh, for today. Um, the first one was the London Derby, which I didn't see. I just saw the highlights where uh, Obama Young with a great header took uh, one nil lead for um, Arsenal. They miss a chance late on. I don't think it was a great game. From I mean, the highlights that I saw was just that goal, and there was a chance in the 78th, and then there were the two Chelsea goals that came the first one. Absolute uh, howler from Leno. You have to judge the ball better. You cannot just dive under. Uh, so uh, it made it falls to Jorginho of all people to make it 1-1 and then Tammy Abraham makes it really nice move uh, makes it 2-1 uh, for uh, Chelsea pretty uh, you know again at London Derby and Chelsea wins it so um, as I would have expected but still um, we gotta win those games I don't want to say I mean Abraham they have seen he's never never Netted against a top team. Is Arsenal a top team? Probably not. So maybe this is exactly for Tim Abraham. Liverpool against Wolves. Oh, yeah, yeah. War. Two, uh, twice took center stage late in the first half. Um, it was a workman-like win for Liverpool. They were not with all the power going forward as usual. They just played two days ago. And similar Wolves that had even uh, less uh, rest than... Uh, Liverpool, but they could keep it tight and could keep Liverpool uh, at bay. I saw maybe the last 20 minutes and I saw quite some highlights. So, yeah, the 1 0, the ball falls to Lalana, who plays it on with his shoulder to Manet, who can slot it home. Uh, referee, of course, first uh, gives it as a handball. War steps in, says it's a goal. I think that was the right decision, definitely. Wolves actually equalize very late in the uh, deep in stoppage time of the first half. And it's taken away by offside right on the side. A knee was maybe offside or whatever. 
at all. It was one of those really, really hairy decisions. I said it before again. There should the line should not be a line. It should be a little have a little bit more fuzziness to it. And if there is overlap, it should not be an offside. It should be if it's a clear thing, then it's offside my opinion i think this would be the obvious fix uh nothing of the sort you know not nothing that makes it more complicated but just take the error of the technology in, in into account van dyke spills a ball pretty badly but it uh not taken i think uh wolves had a few chances to get an equalizer which they probably deserved but liverpool hangs on that's how you win championships get the dirty wins and then in the late game that i mostly saw Manchester City against Sheffield United. Uh, what shall I say? I mean, uh, when I watched it, it was, I think I watched it from minute 30 on because I finished uh, first Liverpool. Manchester City had all the possession da, 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 going around um, and Sheffield United stayed compact and or organized, so there was not really much excitement in there. The excitement came again a little bit from the referee who seemingly blocked the Sheffield play in midfield and so the ball gets to the Bruyne who can play it on to uh, Aguero and slots it home. Since the referee didn't touch the ball there's no need for him by the rule to say no this uh, we have to call back so yeah it is given. I can understand that the Sheffield United players were abs anything but happy with that decision but VAR looked at it and then uh, I think there was another penalty call via Mares uh, has the ball nicely box take takes a shot and goes probably off the shoulder of the Sheffield United player. Um, I think that was close to a handball, but the Bruyne makes it a nice shot. Uh, Two 0 and Manchester City is back on winning ways. One might say. Um, speaking of Manchester, the last thing we'll say: if you if you want to see a funny goal, watch the two 0 of Rashford um, at Burnley. I mean slapstick uh, the way he's falling and still get, 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 getting i've rarely seen a goal like that yes i have but it's slapstick so if you look now at the table after those two rounds we have liverpool 13 points and a game in hand it's a seemingly unsurmountable lead i think I mean, as a statistician i cannot say it's a certainty but it looks really really good for liverpool leicester city and Manchester city are battling it out for spot two i would give it to city uh, Manchester City uh, a little bit more if I look at the overall uh, way that the games are going. Chelsea can hold of Manchester United with that win, so it's a four-point cushion now. But yeah, Manchester United, um, if they get a little bit, little bit more stable, they probably could um, threaten Chelsea, who are a little bit getting on the... I don't want to say they're hitting the skids, but you know, the young... Uh, Chelsea team maybe shows that they are in, in experience, but then they get here and there some wins as well. So uh, let's see how this develops. So United has fifth spots, Spurs uh, and Wolves are at 30. So th those are Europa League battles, and I think Sheffield United is in there. I think Crystal Palace, Everton, despite Angelotti not having two wins, and Everton actually, um, ever since they sacked the coach, having a resurgence of sorts so uh will be interesting to see newcastle is dropping down arsenal is dropping down getting really close to relegation zone on honestly which is staggering Burnley, um brighton southampton yeah with so and so results i mean they get the win at chelsea and they play only a 1-1 um Bournemouth, west ham aston villa those are the ones that are probably for the last relegation spot watford had a a recent resurgence so let's see if that goes Norwich plays nice but just doesn't is not clinically enough despite Timo Pupi on front uh, two other quick news at the end of this video we also had an old firm uh, match today where Rangers beat Celtic 2-1 I since the Scottish League is not on my radar because the teams are not anywhere playing in the Champions League at, at, at the moment I'm foregoing this. I know it's uh, probably one of the uh, most storied games in Europe. I think it's the old most played derby in Europe for sure. So it's a big game. It's just not on on my radar. I read it, and I think I heard yesterday, guess but I didn't even check it. So um, just wanted to mention that. And then from Austria, 
Salzburg is losing another big star from the Champions League campaign, namely Haaland is moving to Dortmund for around 20 million euros or something like that. Um, I think Salzburg will not take a big hit with that. I mean, Minamino and Holland might be a little bit much. I don't want to comment much. I'm not sure if Holland will be a hit at Dortmund. Don't know yet. I think they play a slightly different style of soccer, but let's see. All I can say is the chances of Lusk winning a surprise championship did not get smaller because of that. But hey, everything to be played. Now, I have two top 10 videos, uh, top 10 moments and top 10 jerseys of the year that I'm uh, gonna put out just before the new year. That's my plan. Um, however, if you don't see these or um, this is the last video you see of mine, I want to wish you a happy new year. And yeah, there will be some content with me reviewing games uh, of the Premier League right after New Year's, probably expect around the 3rd or 4th of January. Up until then, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these, and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.